A random sample of 843 births included 432 boys. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that 51.1% of newborn babies are boys. Do the results support the belief that 51.1% of newborn babies are boys? Okay, so let's first take a look at the claim. So the claim tells us that we're testing the claim that 51.1% of the newborn babies are boys. So let's go ahead and identify, well, we're going to decide whether we need to use the p-value or the critical value method within the problem. And so we need to identify the following. So what is the sample size of the problem? Well, the sample size is 843 births. Okay, what is the point estimate? Well, the point estimate is x over n. Well, the amount of boys that's been included is 432 divided by n, which is 843. Okay, now what is the population proportion? Well, we're testing the claim that 51.1% of new babe born babies are boys, so therefore P is going to equal 0.511. Now, how are we determining Q? Well, Q is the complement, so 1 minus 0.511 is going to give us the following, and that's 0.489. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to uh, check the requirements. So we know that 843 of them are randomly selected. We know that there's a fixed number, 843 of the independent trials. And the requirements of n times p and n times q must be greater than or equal to 5 would be both satisfied because 843 times 0.511 is 430.773. 843 times 0.489 is 412.227. And both of them are greater than or equal to 5. Therefore, we're going to say that the three requirements are satisfied. Okay, now we want to state the claim and the opposite of the claim. Well, in the problem, we can see that the claim is that we're testing the claim that 51.1% of the newborn babies are boys. So that's telling us that the population proportion is going to equal 0.511. Now, what would the opposite of the claim then be? Well, the opposite would then be that it's not equal to 0 0.511. So let's use the claim and the opposite of claim to identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. So we know that the null hypothesis always contains the equality sign, and then we have the alternative. Well, the equal sign is in the claim, so the claim is going to be in the null where p is equal to 0 0.511, and therefore the alternative is going to have p which is not equal to 0 0.511. So let's go ahead and then answer the first part of the question. So we know that p is equal to 0 0.511. And the alternative is P is not equal to 0 0.511, so the answer is going to be B. Now we need to identify the test statistic, and then we're going to round it to two decimal places. Before we do, let's go ahead and identify what kind of tail this is. Well, the alternative hypothesis is going to tell us whether it is a left two-tailed or right-tailed test. Well, since it's not equals there in the alternative, we would then say that we have a 2 tailed test. Okay, now that we have a two-tailed test, now we need to identify the significance level. Well, the significance level in our problem is 0 0.05, so alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay, now we need to determine what is the test statistic. Okay, so we're going to use the formula for z, which is the test statistic for the proportion. So we know that our sample size n is equal to 843.
and we know that our point estimate as a fraction is 432 over 843. We know that P, which is the null hypothesis, is equal to 0 0.511. And we know that Q, which is the complement, is 0 0.489. And now we're going to plug those numbers into our formula. So the point estimate of 432 divided by 843 minus P, which is 0 0.511. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of P, which is 0 0.511, times Q, which is 0 0.489. And then we're dividing that by N, which is 843. And then we need to round that to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So parentheses 432 divided by... 843 in parentheses and then we're going to subtract 0 0.511 and that's in the numerator. Now we're going to divide the square root of parentheses 0 0.511 times 0 0.489 and then we're dividing that by 843. Let's go back make sure we put in the division symbol. So divide it by 843, press enter, and then there is our test statistic. Now let's go ahead and round that to two decimal places as needed. So therefore we end up getting 0 0.08 as our test statistic. So 0 0.08. And there is our test statistic. And now we need to find the p-value of that. So since we're using the p-value method, we're not going to use the critical value method, but we do need to draw our bell curve so we can see what's happening and then label it. So here is our bell curve. Okay, and we know that the mean is zero. We get a test statistic that is positive. So that means that it's to the right here of 0.08. But it's a two-tailed distribution, so we need to also have the same area on this side. So in order to find the p-value here, it's a two-tailed test. So the p-value is then going to equal the probability of when that test statistic is greater than or equal to 0 0.08. And once we find that p-value, we're going to multiply it by 2. So... Let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. And then since the test statistic is Z, we're going to use the calculator for the normal distribution. Make sure that our equality is greater than. And then we're going to put in a test statistic of 0 0.08. Then we want to round that to three decimal places so we get 0 0.468. And since there's two tails, we need to multiply that by two. So two times 0 0.468 gives us 0 0.936. So let's go ahead and put that p-value in here. 0 0.936. Okay, now we need to then identify the conclusion. So, come back up to the top here. What was our claim? Well, our claim included the equal sign. Okay, so when we look at our, um, before we make our decision, since we know that we had the equal sign in there, now let's compare the p-value to the significance level. Well, the p-value is 0 0.936, and then the significance uh, value is 0 0.05. And we can see that the p-value is greater than that. And so we reject the null if the p-value is less than a significance level or less than or equal to. 
and then we fail to reject if the p-value is greater than the significance level. In this case here, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And again, we said that the claim has the equality. So when we look at our conclusions, we know that we're not going to include the first two because it says it does not include the equality. So it's either going to be the last two. And we failed to reject the null, so we're going to eliminate the third scenario. So we would say the following. We would say that we failed to reject the null hypothesis and there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim and then followed by the original claim in the problem. So coming over here for our options, we're going to say that we failed to reject the null and there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that 51.1% of newborn babies are boys. Let's go ahead and select that result. And there is our answer. Now it says, do the results support the belief that 51.1% of newborn babies are boys? And we would say D, the results do not support the belief that 51.1% of newborn babies are boys. The results merely show that there is not strong event evidence against the rate of 51.1%. And there is our result.